Hi friends, welcome back. I'm so glad you came back to see my video this week. I know it may be a little bit confusing because I'm making videos on Fridays now instead of every Tuesday. And now I'm also doing videos once or twice a month. And so it may be difficult to know, hey, is Nye posting this week? Well, guess what? All you have to do is hit that notification bell and make sure that you subscribe to the Ellie and Mac Patterns channel. That way, y'all don't ever miss me when I'm over here having fun and likely cutting up because you know that's how I live over here. That's how I do. <laughs> this week, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a very, very easy way to make a hair bow. Oh. <laughs> There we go. For your favorite person, or your not favorite person, or one of your customers, or clients, you could make a hair bow. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Anyway, I'm gonna teach you how to make a very, very simple hair bow with just a little bit of fabric, and if you got about 10 minutes, I got you. But you gotta stick around, okay? I'm Nye with Ellie and Mac. Come along, friends. <laughs> Okay friends, thanks for coming back. Let me show you what you need to make these bows. You're gonna need a piece of fabric that is six by 18 inches. If you wanna do the bow that I have here, or if you want to do a larger bow, you may cut a piece of knit fabric that is eight by 24 inches. You're gonna need a strip of fabric that is two inches in width it can be any random length. You're just going to use it to bind your bow to your barrette. Next, you're gonna need some barrettes. These are very easy to find online. You can actually find them in your neighborhood like beauty supply stores. Um, they're relatively cheap. You can probably get them for like a pack of 50 to a pack of 100. And they come in different sizes, which is super great. So if you have like really thick hair, you can get a larger barrette. And if you have like, you can get even a little tiny ones. <laughs> okay, you're also gonna need some rubber bands. Now, I get these from the beauty supply store, and honestly, I get all kinds of trauma when I see these because I remember my mom used to use these to put my hair up when I was a kid, and there was a lot of crying and a lot of getting hit in the head with a brush <laughs> because I would not sit still. But uh, yeah, you're gonna need some of these too. Don't be afraid, nobody's gonna be doing your hair. <laughs> um, and here's a safety pin, you're gonna need this because when you sew your strip to go around, you're gonna need to face it right sides out. Some scissors so you can cut your fabric or a rotary cutter. You're gonna need a glue gun and be very careful because we all know I may or may not have burned myself whilst making this video. You know I burned myself. This is just how I roll. <laughs> You can use your sewing machine or you can use your serger in order to sew the seams if you like. Whichever one of those you have available is perfectly fine. Now, you don't have to worry about doing a stretch stitch, but if you feel more comfortable on your sewing machine doing a stretch stitch, go ahead and do a stretch stitch. Now, the reason why I say that is because you can probably get away with a long stitch because no one is going to wear this bow or squeeze anything into this bow so it's not gonna get stretched right no! okay so and it's not likely anybody's gonna actually throw these barrettes in the washing machine just make new ones because now you know how okay so in order to get started you will take your fabric now i'm gonna take the actual large piece because you've already seen the oh goodness you've already seen the small bow but you haven't seen the larger one. So I'm gonna make the larger one this time. Generally speaking, you wanna have a larger barrette if you're gonna make the larger bow, but these are all the ones I have and I'm cheap and I'm not buying new ones. Okay, I'm cheap and I have a ton of them here in this Ziploc zip bag, which we're going to from now on refer to as a, um, oh, <laughs> which we will now refer to as my designer barrette bag. You don't see the designer name on it? 
It says right here, great value. Great value is a designer brand. Walmart, but <laughs> let me stop playing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get to sewing. You're gonna fold your fabric lengthwise, just like this, bloop, and then you're gonna sew across. Yeah, that wasn't magic, I just did some camera stuff. <laughs> but look, it's already done. So now what I'm gonna do is fold the corner. You keep the thread facing away from you and fold the upper left corner down until it meets and is parallel with the bottom. And you do the same thing on the other side. Now what you're gonna do is memory crease it. So you just basically, memory crease just means you just push down on the fabric, okay? And I actually have one of those little rollers, beep, 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 that you would roll over the fabric and create a memory crease, but I can't find it right now. <laughs> um, so you do that, and then you cut on that line. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? If you plan, if you plan to use your serger, you can actually just mark that memory crease and then go ahead and serge it right on down. Because guess what, y'all? A serger has a knife on it. No, I made it way too much like Halloween in here. <laughs> so now you're gonna sew right down to the corners. Bam! I know, right? I'm a bad girl with a camera. All right. <laughs> Look out. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is gonna go to the center and you're gonna snip those little threads because what you're gonna need to do is open it up. So snip the threads in the center. I mean, you're basically just removing the serge. If you wanted to, you could just serge and then skip about an inch and serge or so, um, so you don't have to cut the threads, but for me, it's a little bit faster if I just do this and then open it up right here in the middle to flip it inside out. Okay, now I have it open. I can go ahead and flip this right sides out. Y'all, this is so fast. I, I promise you, you're gonna be like, what? So you flip it out. Okay, so <laughs> now I have it all flipped out and you have this tiny little opening here. This little opening here is not really a threat, okay? Because it's gonna be bunched up in your bow. But if it makes you feel any better, you can just stick a little dot of glue on there. Right? And pinch it closed. Winning! Okay, so now you have your bow. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Okay, now you have your bow with your short sides facing away and long sides facing down towards you. You wanna take the bow and fold until your curved edge is meeting the bottom of your strip. So you do that again on the other side. And now you have two sides where your curved edge is just about at the bottom of your bow just like that and then you can shoop, smush it you want to see how I did that real quick shoop, smoosh okay and then when you smush it all up it kind of looks like a bow right that's when you get your torture device I mean ponytailers <laughs> and you wrap them around now the reason why I use these is because you can take them off and put them back on I have once tried to use thread, but then I have to hold it down and try and tie it, and it makes me miserable. So these ponytailers are super awesome and super fast. So now all you need to do is adjust your bow the way you want it to fall. Okay, so now I have my bow all bunched up just the way I like it. Just like this. And now, you get that two inch strip of fabric and you sew it down lengthwise. And then put that in front of you with the seam up. You have your bow here and you grab your barrette. When you get your barrette, you're gonna to wanna to take the innards out, this little piece. You'll put it back in later, okay? So first things first, you need to glue it to your bow. You don't have to put a ton of glue, just a tiny little dot right in the middle 
but don't put it on your elastic because those elastics will break because they're not made for this kind of heat. So you're just putting it in the middle so that you can have a barrette that's not actually like squealing around and moving. All right, so put a little dot in there, yay. Now you wanna separate your little bow, okay? Get your strip of fabric and cut the end off because you want it nice and clean. So the first thing you do is you put a tiny strip inside your barrette of glue. Just a little bit and press your little tube down right on top of it. Once you have that glued onto the inside of your barrette, you can then take the whole thing, hold it together with your little thumb and forefinger and flip it over. When you flip it over, you will see how the center will look super cute with your band on it, right? Okay, so then you flip it over again to get it to come around the backside of your bow again. So now that you're looking at it, the plan is to have enough of this strip that you can fold it under. That way you don't have like a raw edge hanging out on the inside of your bow, okay? So give yourself a little bit of leeway. I like to go just a little bit past where the original one is, where the original uh, strip was glued, like that. And then, I put a couple dabs of glue on there again, just a couple. Now with this, um, sometimes it helps to let it set just a couple of seconds before you press down on it. So then I roll this strip inward and then I place it on top of the other, just like this and hold it until it cools off. If you try to let go before it's cool, what's gonna happen is it's likely to pull off and then you'll have to do it again and then you have to deal with the mess of the glue because there is nothing worse than making a craft and having like glue everywhere. It looks like spider webs all over your stuff and nobody wants spider webs in their hair unless they're celebrating a spooky holiday. Okay, so do you see how clean that is? Yes! <laughs> I did it! Okay, then you take your barrette innards and you slip them back inside. Yay! And now you have your hair bow. Is that not the coolest thing ever? Very minimal sewing just a teensy bit of glue, a little bit of ingenuity, and a couple of torture devices, and you have a cute little bow. I hope you like what we have done here this week. I hope you go on and make a whole bunch of bows because these can be worn for all kinds of things and my little biscuit just loves them. So I hope you have a fabulous week. Go ahead and check out some of the videos that I have after this and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and post some links to some videos that you might actually like that I've done before. Make sure that you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of the fun that we're having over here. Me and Nancy, and no, not Nancy. <laughs> Have a good time and sew the things. Yeah, bye. <laughs> bye friends.